So hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're doing great because today I have a great subject to talk about with you. And today we're gonna be talking about micro front ends with Webpack's Module Federation plugin. I know that you must have heard somehow about micro front ends. If you haven't, please raise your hand. Okay, good, good. Well, today we're gonna try to clear up some of those things uh, if you don't understand or never heard about it as well as module federation what it is um, and where can we use it so who am I my name is Daniel Frey I'm originally from Israel I'm a senior front-end developer at IO which is a consultancy company in the Netherlands which is where I'm also located right now I also love to create content at DanielFrey.me I have also a podcast uh, where I share my experience along with other people about various projects. So I really recommend you go and check that one out. I also love meeting and collaborating with people. And you can also uh, follow me on my Twitter account, which is Daniel Frey 101 um, And I repost and talk about a bunch of different things. Uh, this is related to technology, of course, and uh, front-end development. And I'm also really passionate about accessibility and UX UI. So before we dive in um, into this uh, brand or maybe new subject to yourself, we need to understand uh, the reasoning behind it. And, you know, these days we have any, at least every other week, we have a new framework coming in JavaScript. Um, <laughs> you know, you can either be naive or you can either understand where it's coming from. So let's start with that. Let's identify some goals. First of all, whenever we create an application or a team, we want to have those points. We want to have fast and predictable delivery. We want to have maintainable code bases, the ability to scale our team and technology while keeping also up to date with the recent technologies and picking up the right tool for the job. Now let's have a look at the traditional way. Currently, we have a, a backend with microservices and a front end, a monolith front end where you have this huge uh, React application, uh, which you can also manage with maybe Monolith and whatever you're, uh, however you choose to manage it currently. Um, but you communicate with the backend that is built on microservices. Now, obviously uh, the microservices has been there for a while and you might be thinking like, oh, microservices, micro front ends. I start to see some, some, some connection. Well, Hold up your guns there and let's <laughs> let's continue with the next slide and the struggles of monoliths in the front end. So obviously, uh, whenever uh, we choose um, a technology for our application, we have something called technology lock currently. So if we chose AngularJS back in 2010, that's most likely going to be the technology of the choice of the entire lifetime of this application. Now, what if there is an objectively better tool for a certain job? Or what if the technology advances? Another problem or issue, a struggle, is single deployment, communication overhead. So releases need to be coordinated carefully. The application is most likely to break due to other teams work and which basically resulting in affecting our delivery time. Another thing is that um, maintainability. So maintaining a big application is already difficult enough than it is already now. So basically maintaining um, a smaller application is just easier, right? If we could, or maybe we can. So more moving parts and interview dependencies resulting in difficulties to introduce changes, obviously. So fourth problem is process overhead. So the process of introducing changes becomes tiring, minor change decisions become major as they affect the other teams and teams need to communicate closely before making certain changes, which basically costs time. Now you might be asking, Daniel, what, what is the solution? Well, let me show you something. So here there is a basically a SPA application, really simple. Uh, it shows you my latest uh, episodes on my podcast. Um, you have a card, you have a header and a footer. Um, on the card, you can either play the episode or you can uh, like it. And when you like it, you're going to see that you have a mini card here uh, where it shows you what you liked. Also, when you click on the episode, uh, you can basically uh, see the episode's details. And again, you can unlike or like it. And whenever you click here on this card list, you will see a checkout button. When you click on the checkout button, you're going to see 
basically the list of uh, episodes that you liked. And what you can do, you can check out, and then it's just going to clear the cards. Uh, just very simple application. Now, what if I told you that those were four separate websites? Those websites shared the routing, and they even shared the liking card. And I could deploy every single one of those websites independently of the others, and changes will reflect immediately. I know, right? <laughs> so the game changes here where you have a header and a footer and basically they can be in, in their own repository. Uh, we have a mini card, which is also a part of the liking card uh, repository. We have the media player, which has its own repository as well, our project, um, an episode content. And then even the like button is part of the, basically uh, of this like card repo, but then it shows in the cart uh, and they're just using each other. Then it's resulting in something like this, where we can split our teams, if you will, in, in chapters or <laughs> episodes or however you uh, would want to call it, uh, where things are working like that. So where you have team D prefers to use Vue.js, for example, they could. Now, how um, and why would you? That's another thing, but you could basically do that. You can split. Um, we have the header, we have the footer, and let's say team A is in charge on that. Team B is in charge on the episode details. The, the checkout page, that is team C. Uh, the play, the, basically, the player, uh, the player part is team D, and that is built on Vue.js, if you will, right? And of course, so now that we understand what micro front ends let us do, uh, <laughs> you might be thinking, but like, hey, Daniel, how do I apply it? And probably use NPM packages. Well, versioning is tough, right? So let's say we have those uh, four different uh, projects and we are deploying them through using NPM. And let's say in the home page, I updated the, the header um, and the header is being used also in the content page obviously, right? So then what's going to happen is that if I'm using an NPM package, I will have to redeploy my home page, also deploy my content. Or let's say also the header is being used not only in the content, but also being used in the like card on the player. It doesn't matter. It's just they have dependency between each other and you have to update them or redeploy them to show the, the latest changes. Well, let me show you something that is called module federation, Webpack module federation plugin. Do you want to update the header? No problem. So here in the video, you can see a really simple example where I have the header as a title, hello, and then I change it to welcome to Daniel Frey Me Talks. And I actually am in the content project, but I change it in the header uh, project and it, I just save the changes and it just basically have a, a runtime deployment or runtime uh, changes uh, that are immediately represented on my page. And how it works is basically just Webpack uh, is hooking you something with the, with the major, you can say with the module federation plugin. Um, and you have those basically different properties there uh, where you consume them. So it, it looks something like that. So you have basically the, the webpack.config in each of one of your application or projects where you have the micro RFEs. And you have something called name, uh, which is basically the name of your application. You have something that is called exposes here and remotes. The remotes is what you're consuming to your application in this application. And in the exposes is what kind of you, if you will, components that you're exposing outside for the world to use, right? Um, and, and that is how this magic is happening. And if you think about um, how do you import, how does importing work, or just look at it. It, it does look like really simple as if you're using an NPM package, but again, you're not. Um, this is just Webpack's uh, module federation doing its work for you. Um, and it's actually looking pretty slick, right? Well, let's review. Before, right? Before we had this um, technology lock, you had this, you know, maintenance, you had this communication over overload. And all the teams had to basically really, really be close, tightly coordinate with each other. Right now, on the other side, you have basically different teams um, are responsible on a very small part of the application. So imagine your team is only responsible on header and footer. 
you don't have to think anymore about you know like the 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 whole application and it's just isn't it easier than to maintain then that small application um and do you want to change technology because your current technology is not up to date you could if you wanted to um do you want to go to production faster because you have basically an e-commerce website and you want to change the header to be on black friday and you just you know you don't have time now to redeploy like all your applications to show that in an e-commerce website which you have tons of pages then you just upload the header and will live reload it and, and and it's just you know like gives you that power now that you have so the, the you i want to just stress here that you know webpack module federation again is just a tool to apply basically micro front ends micro front ends is the thinking the architecture um, but the, the tool that we use here lets us, you know, do basically gives us this power of the live reloading, um, and we don't have to redeploy our applications. And there is other tools of doing that. You can also be using iframes or, you know, I'm just giving like examples of, of, of things that are, I've seen. Um, but again, um, I want you to understand, like, this is also not perfect. So, like, you could be still having certain issues in your current team um, about, like, communication overhead, and, and but now it's just being really reduced to that team level. Now, who uses microfinance, as you might ask yourself? So, these are the companies, one of the big, basically the big names uh, that use that. Now, it means that you need to use it, right? <laughs> No, I'm kidding, right? So we're we're not uh, so uh, we're not that cat that you saw in the beginning uh, with the bright eyes, right? You, you know better now. Um, and I really want you to think: uh, Does this make sense in my company? And also, I want to mention that th these companies are using micro fees, but it doesn't mean that you're they're using module federation. So there you go. You you need to understand that these are like a bit different, right? Um, now you may have some concerns. So of course, when I built my project in micro fees, I was, you know, I was thinking like, mm, is this really, is this really, <laughs> is, aren't I importing packages more than once? Like with this, uh, I have now, you know, this homepage and I have a lot of, uh, of course, micro fees. Aren't I importing React like a lot of times? Well, you're not. <laughs> there is something called a uh, singleton mode. In each of the your basically in each of your projects, you're gonna have a webpack config.js where you have a section called shared, where you have React as a singleton true, where you're gonna import it only once. You're gonna have React DOM there. Obviously, in this project, we use only I use only React. So in your case, it might look a bit different, but again, it's there, <laughs> and you can avoid uh, importing over and over again those packages. So you, one thing cleared out another thing is that what about typescript support so this 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 case might happen where i have basically i imported this uh this package and again this is not an npm package right now you can really see it that it's not and it, my ide is not really you know doesn't not recognize it um <laughs> it doesn't understand what the hell is happening uh, so then you can basically, I found uh, online a few ways to right now fix it. Um, and I want to mention, uh, I'm not a TypeScript pro, and I think also the solution is, um, <laughs> you can say, not going to be the best. But again, there is a solution. Um, and actually, there are talks right now with uh, Microsoft about fixing those issues um, to improve it, uh, the support for module federation. But what you can do is basically declare modules. So here I created the content.d.ts where I declared the different modules that I'm using. And it's basically solves then the issue that we just saw right now, just this issue. And another thing that you can do is the link types. So basically, um, whenever you are using, uh, you know, a component, which, you know, has a certain type definition on it, you need to basically and uh, know, okay, this prop has to be a string, right? Or this prop has to be a number. Now you can do that basically uh, with linking them together. <clears throat> well, what about versioning, right? So no versioning in runtime reload. So no versioning, runtime reload, yay. But what if the header team, uh, basically, if you will, <laughs> adds a mandatory prop and I'm not aware of it? Well, there's something you can use. 
error boundaries in React. By the way, this is not going to other frameworks. Um, in other frameworks, you have to find a solution for that. Um, but basically, it must be a class component that um, can be for those people who love uh, basically been using hooks now and they're only using functional components. This is actually the only case that I've seen that actually uh, is a good case to use uh, class components. And the way it works, so you can just uh, use this um, as a regular component. So right, we, we, we have, a, have a new component called error boundary. And I have basically uh, wrapped my header component now, uh, or if you will, the header section um, in my project uh, with the error boundary, uh, boundary. So now if that fails to load because of some reason or something went wrong, like they now want to, uh, the header team wanted a prop. They wanted to have now a title um, and I didn't give it a title because I didn't need to give it previously. Of course, we have library reload. The, the, they updated it. Now it will break. So there is something, of course, uh, now it's handling it. So then it will show like something is wrong. Now, this is much better than the whole application is failing, right? And also you can still use the other parts. So there is no problem and worries there. Now, um, so yeah, I hope that some of your concerns has been addressed now. And here are some of the resources that I've used. So I want you to to, to mention a couple of things. First of all, uh, if you want to, all the code and everything that you need is in my GitHub profile. Um, also, the module, module federation, I would recommend to read a bit more about it. You can do it there. Uh, I also want to mention and shout out Ariel. Uh, really helped me with providing context and reviewing this uh, up, this uh, talk. So thank you, Ariel. I also want to recommend to use this article. I don't understand microphone ends from Luca, uh, which talks a lot about microphone ends and uh, has some information around it. So. If you have any questions, hit me up, let me know. Um, would love to answer them. And thank you so much for listening and attending. Also, I'm really always a welcoming and reachable on LinkedIn or Twitter. And if you want to meet up uh, in person or online, talk about anything, just let me know. Um, I also love to host like uh, interesting individuals on my podcast. So if you might uh, want to join as a guest also, let me know. Feel free. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening, day, wherever and what time, whatever you're listening to is. Goodbye.